Coming up in the news tonight, more measures relaxed as the country slowly reopens in phases. A two-week lockdown in Bimini starts tonight. And a date set for the memorial for the victims of Dorian and Abaco. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. The number of COVID-19 cases holding steady. It has been some four days now since a confirmed case of COVID-19 has been reported in the country. There are 96 confirmed cases to date, including 74 cases in New Providence, 8 in Grand Bahama, 13 in Bimini, and 1 in Cat Key. The number of recovered cases is at 42. Active cases are at 43. And there are 7 hospitalized cases. The number of COVID-19 related deaths remain at 11 and some 1,814 tests have been completed. The nation's leader during a national address yesterday, noting that the country is making progress in containing the spread of the virus. He also outlined plans to relax some of the measures and allow some commercial activity in some islands of the country. Italia Hall has our top story. Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis says, he fully understands the anxiety and frustration of many Bahamians and residents to reopen their economy, but the government must act with prudence and good judgment. He says many are eager to see the economy fully open up to travel for Bahamians and to welcome visitors back into the country, but notes that the government is well advanced in planning for the reopening of the tourism sector and to allow travel in and out of the Bahamas. Our resorts, our airports, and our seaports are finalizing the health and safety protocols that will be necessary for us to provide for a reopening. Taking into account what is being done within the region and around the world, these extensive guidelines will be designed to provide for reasonable assurance that travel and leisure are generally safe. Now the government is looking at a possible opening date for commercial travel on or before July 1st. But the Prime Minister says that date may change depending on the circumstances. I want to repeat, however, that this date is not final. It will be adjusted if we see a deterioration in the COVID-19 infection trends or if we determine that the protocols and procedures are not in place sufficiently to warrant this opening. Our opening will depend on your cooperation. A gradual reopening of inter-island travel is about to begin. The Ministry of Health has developed a policy and protocol for the approval and monitoring of individuals traveling to islands that have resumed normal commercial activity. This policy and protocol will require individuals to register with the Ministry of Health by emailing COVID-19 travel at bahamas.gov.bs or persons can call 511 for more information. Individuals must also submit to an evaluation by a Ministry of Health authorized physician in the public or private sector. I am pleased to announce tonight that almost every doctor in the private sector has made a commitment to come on board. This evaluation will include a risk assessment via a questionnaire to determine the individual's level of risk for COVID-19 infection, plus or minus a physical exam to determine the presence of any symptoms consistent with COVID-19. Two repatriation exercises are scheduled for this coming week from Fort Lauderdale, Florida into New Providence. There will be a flight on Thursday, May 21st and one on Saturday, May 23rd. A flight to Grand Bahama will be accommodated if necessary. Those who are seeking to return home through this repatriation exercise and who meet the required protocols, including a COVID-19 negative test, may book directly through Bahamas Air. Those 
who already have a return ticket on Bahamas Air, should call the airline's ticket office between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. beginning Monday tomorrow. Passengers will be required to present the COVID-19 negative test results to a Bahamas Air agent before being allowed to board the aircraft. A representative of the council will be present who will validate the COVID test result. Now the nation's leader is also reminding Bahamians that this is a time for solidarity and kindness, especially towards those in greatest need, and Bahamians must do what they can to help others. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Now, it was announced by the Prime Minister during his national address on Sunday afternoon that construction companies on New Providence and the Grand Bahama may now operate on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. In order to facilitate hurricane preparedness, home and hardware stores will now be allowed to open in-store hours on Mondays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. This is in addition to the Wednesday and Friday in-store hours that home and hardware stores are currently allowed to operate. The operating hours also apply to manufacturers of hurricane-proof windows and other hurricane-related products. Curbside and delivery services may continue as previously outlined in Phase 1B. Now, pharmacies may now operate from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday for the general public and Saturday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. for essential workers only. Also, exercise measures have been further relaxed during the weekend lockdowns. Exercise may now take place on Saturday and Sunday from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. in one's immediate neighborhood. A two-week lockdown on the island of Bimini taking effect at 9 o'clock tonight. The lockdown, which was implemented to slow and control the community spread of the COVID-19 virus on that island, will end on Saturday, May 30th at midnight. The nation's leader says he wants to reassure residents of Bimini that there will be sufficient food and supplies on the island during the lockdown period. Groceries and supplies arrived in Bimini over the weekend by boat to restock food stores in advance of the lockdown. The Department of Social Services distributed 600 food vouchers on Friday past to ensure residents in need had the necessary resources to purchase food before Monday. The government's National Food Distribution Task Force has also coordinated the delivery of 100 food packages through the Bahamas Feeding Network to Bimini. Additional food packages will be delivered before the end of the lockdown. Now, during the lockdown period, a team of 12 volunteers will assist the island administrator with checking in and assessing residents in need of assistance. This group will also help to manage the food pantry on the island. The Royal Bahamas Police Force has agreed to provide escort service for the administrator and her team as needed. Boats carrying foods and supplies will also be allowed to call on Bimini during the lockdown period to ensure Food stores are restocked after the lockdown ends. Now, as the two-week lockdown takes effect, officer in charge of the Bimini Division, Superintendent Rustin Moss, says additional officers are on the ground and will remain there for the duration of the lockdown period. He says today officers went through the community handing out pamphlets relating to quarantine and isolation. The island's administrator, Cleo Pinder, says Three of the major food stores on the island are low on supplies, which is an indication that residents are prepared. When it comes to curfew and lockdown, let's be clear on a lockdown. With a lockdown, we are talking about all essential services, schools and food stores that are closed for a specific period of time. But the basic objective of a lockdown is to increase social distancing due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It's all about keeping you safe, keeping us safe, and in that vein, I ask that you please comply with the law of the land. 
Yes, I want you to continue to maintain, you know, sanitizing those hands, maintain that social distancing, and of course, to wear your face mask. We have emergency numbers that are in circulation that you can call in the event of an emergency. We also encourage persons that if you have to leave your residence for whatever reason, you must make sure that you obtain permission before you leave your residence as of 9 p.m. tonight. The residents of Bimini have the food in their homes. This is a close-knit community. Nobody is going to go without. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to ensure that persons who need, in fact, um, of the, so the 600 packages, um, uh, vouchers that the Prime Minister spoke about, 450 were done in, in food vouchers, and what we did to ensure that residents have food, the other 50 was done in, in, in grocery items. And so the volunteers are actually packaging now, and they consist of basically the things that you would go to the food store for, um, including meat, including um, the sandwich meats. Um, so no no one will go hungry in Bimini. And in addition, we have the mailboats that will still be coming in. Our Freeport boat got delayed a bit. I don't know what happened there. Um, the the Some paperwork, but I told the captain um, of the boat, it's going to get here very close to the curfew. And so persons will not be able to come out and get their items. So I've asked the captain to send me the copy of the manifest, and then we'll have to have those items delivered to the, to the residents. Concerns also being expressed on the island of Abaco this evening. A local dentist says that not only did the full reopening come rather suddenly, but it also presents a major safety concern as residents are moving about more freely. Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, announcing that commercial activity can resume on the island of Abaco. While this may be good news for many businesses economically, a local dentist, Dr. Therese Bonamy, says that she is still concerned about her safety and that of her staff. She adds that she also believes the reopening should have come with a bit more warning in order for businesses and their employees to prepare. Now that the island is open, um, persons are able to come in without being tested or not knowing their condition, their previous conditions where they're coming from. And even though we cover ourselves and we're masking down and wiping and cleaning and sterilizing, we don't know who the persons are that are coming in. I'm seeing patients from Freeport. They're telling me that they've been here or blah, blah, blah. But I have no proof to know that they just came to the island or been here. So my concern is not knowing. Now, inter-island travel will also be allowed between a limited number of islands, which includes Abaco. Dr. Bonamy says that although residents coming in will have to be tested and present a COVID-19 authorization travel card, she is unaware of any testing being done on the island of Abaco. None, nobody. I mean, no, I don't know. I don't even know whether we even have testing kits here. I have no idea. So we just happen to take person's word all go blank, basically. All we can do is ask the patients whether they experience or had any have any symptoms of the COVID-19, any fever, any cough, um, whether they've been around anybody, whether they traveled, um, whether they, if they have, did they quarantine. There's not a whole lot that we can do here on the Isle of Abaco. And when it comes to the safety of her staff and clients, she says that they will be applying strict social distancing rules and all staff members will be fully covered in personal protective equipment. Okay, we um, all are going to be draped down with our masks, our goggles, our shields. We have um, special jackets that we wear anyway, as I said, as, as, as uh, dental professionals. Our patients, they're, they're only allowed, like in the front office, there'll be no patients anymore in the front office. I have like 20 chairs, so it'll now be like one person if they are in the office. And the others will be waiting in the, you know, we'll try to book them out like an hour for patients. That way we, we won't have that, that congestion like that we normally have. So obviously it's going to affect everything. Everything has changed until we know. So it'll be one patient. I have four rooms that are operating. Uh, we have four staff, one in the front, a dental assistant, a dental hygienist, and myself. And I think the greater problem would arise because we also have visiting specialists, oral surgeons, orthodontists, 
and the periodontist, which really comes once a month. So that's going to be another challenge that we'll face. Now, Dr. Bonamy has this advice for her fellow residents of Abaco. would like for us to all to not get locks mm -hmm. and, and thinking that now that the island is open, that we can just go about our daily routines because life has changed, everything has changed. And until we know and know more about this virus, this epidemic that's hit the world, I think that we all need to practice what we should have known or been doing when we were children, knowing to wash our hands and, you know, and to be more aware of our environment and respectful of other persons. So if someone says, look here, you know, can you please bark back, be respectful and give the person this, you know, distance that's required. And be patient. We have to be patient in this hour and prayerful. Agape Family Dental Center is located in Marsh Harbor. The Disaster Reconstruction Authority is announcing that the service of remembrance for the victims of Hurricane Dorian will take place on Friday, May 22nd at 10 a.m. The service and burial will be led by the Bahamas Christian Council and Abaco Christian Council. It will take place at the Public Cemetery on SC Boodle Highway in Central Pines. Managing Director of the Authority, Catherine Forbes-Smith says, it is important to celebrate the lives of those who perished during Hurricane Dorian and that the organization thinks that it is now possible to have an appropriate service to honor those who died while allowing members of the Abaco community to participate in a manner that upholds public health guidelines. The statement concludes by stating that honoring those who lost their lives during Hurricane Dorian is a priority of the Disaster Reconstruction Authority, the Abaco Christian Council, the Bahamas Christian Council, and the Bahamas United Funeral Homes and Morticians Association. Now, you may remember that the Remembrance Service was previously postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In news from the court, Trevor Rackley and a male juvenile were arraigned before Deputy Chief Magistrate Debbie Ferguson on two counts of murder. They were not required to enter a plea, and the matter was adjourned to the 10th of August for trial. Rackley was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services, and the juvenile was remanded to the Simpson Pen Home for Boys. The charges are in connection with the shooting incidents in the Freeport area that occurred on Monday, May 11th, that left two persons, a male and a female, dead. This is Bishop Clifton Cooper from the Invaders for Christ Family Center. I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. Matthew chapter eight, verse five. The Bible says that the centurion who came to Jesus when his servant was sick, he said, Master, my servant is sick. And the story says that Jesus thought that the centurion wanted him to come to his home. By faith, the centurion said to him, no master, you don't have to come to my house. But I know that if you say the word, my servant would be healed. That faith that the centurion had, his servant will heal. I'm saying to you, Bahamas, Yes, we have this coronavirus that is going on in the world. And this right now is an act of God. This is not man. Man can't shut down the world. Only God. And this right now, this coronavirus, this COVID-19 is God. God is talking to other, God is talking to the church. God is talking to the government of every country. God is talking to us as leaders of the church. We need to get it right. There are a lot of things that we're locking in in the body of Christ. There's a lot of things that we're locking in in the church and we need to get it right. I come to you today just to give you an encouraging word. Faith, hold faith. And all we gotta do is keep the faith. There is only a test. And if you can stand the test, we will pass the test. And I say to you today, stand the test, hold the faith. This too 
shall pass. God bless. The Rotary Organization making another generous donation. That story straight ahead. <laughs> 